Google's Nexus 4 is essentially an LG Optimus G, which has LTE support. So why don't we? I'm Joe Levi for Pocket Now, and we're Android Power users. Here's how to get LTE on your Nexus 4. First up, some disclaimers. This information has been around for a while. A lot of you may be saying this is old news. There have been some recent advancements, and that's why we're sharing it right now. The initial problem was the Nexus 4 doesn't have LTE in it. It's not entirely true. See, it did when it originally came out. You just had to go in and turn it on and set up your APN correctly. Well, that would stick around for a little while and then no longer work. And then Google pressed out a patch that turned that off so we couldn't do it anymore. After that, certain hacks were released that let us do that again. But, again, it's been somewhat difficult. The biggest hurdle so far, and the reason that we've put off showing this to you until today, is Android 4.3. See, one of the problems with this hack, you know, before we get into the problems, let's get into the guts of why, why this isn't in the phone to begin with. It's not in the phone simply because it's not FCC approved to be in the phone and Google wanted to cut some corners and save some money with LTE. That makes sense, right? So there's not all the stuff that you need to get LTE in the phone, at least not optimally. Some people have said there's no LTE amplifier, there's no LTE antenna, blah, blah, blah. The chip is there. The firmware for the radio exists. The settings obviously exist, so what's the problem? Well, that FCC certification is really needed to do that in a legitimate way. Of course, it's the same essential hardware as the Optimus G, which does have FCC certification, so I'm not too worried about it. First set of problems. The bands are somewhat limited. Rogers, you should be okay. T-Mobile LTE. Yep, you're good. AT&T, some others, it may be hit or miss, probably not. Keep that in mind. You can go ahead and try this. It's not going to hurt anything if you don't have LTE for that particular carrier, or that particular band rather, so you may as well give it a shot. Last problem is Android 4.3 support. Now, the reason that this has taken so long is up until just, well, not long ago, if you wanted to use Android 4.3 and this hack, you had to give up voice audio on your phone calls, at least on T-Mobile which I have, and it was painful. And I wasn't really prepared to show you this and say, hey, this is great until you upgrade, and then if you do, you're kind of out of luck. Now that's changed. There are some new hybrid radios out there that combine 0.27 and 0.33 with 0.84 and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it works now. So there's no reason not to show this to you right now and get you going. There's the long intro. I hope it was worth it to you. Let's get down to flashing. First up, you're going to need a uh, rooted phone. This does require a root. I have rooted this and I'm booted up into recovery mode. The next thing, you're going to need one of two different zip files to flash. That's a new firmware for your radio. Like I said, there are two versions now, the 0.27-84 hybrid and the 0.33-84 hybrid. Either one of them worked for me. The 0.33 worked better for me, but your mileage may vary. So try them both and see which performance you get better. Uh, enough with that. I've gone ahead and downloaded this, so let's go ahead and flash this. We want to install zip from SD card. We'll do that. We'll choose the zip from SD. I'm user zero, and it should be in my downloads. And right here, you can see these are the old versions. I'm running on 0.33 right now, 0.27 I had in there as well. The one that we want now is the 0.3384 hybrid. So we're gonna go ahead and select that one. Do we wanna install it? Yes. Now I'm gonna have links to all of this. The thread is very helpful, the download links. I'm gonna have those in the article over at pocketnow.com. The link's down in the descriptions. As you can see here, it's writing the modem image. This takes just a second to go through and do, and it's just that simple. We're done. All we got to do now is reboot and make sure that our settings are correct so that 
we're utilizing that new radio. Next we need to make sure that 4G or LTE is turned on. You can see mine already is, but this is how you need to go through and do that. Sometimes this happens automatically, sometimes more than often it does not, especially the first time. So we go into settings, and we're going to come down in here to more under wireless and networks. Once we're in there, go to mobile networks, and then we're going to want to change our network mode so that preferred is LTE, GSM, WCDMA. Hey, if you just do this one, you're not going to get HSPA or your 3G speeds. If you do this, you're going to get that and then fall back to edge. So make sure that you keep that in mind, select that. And one more thing and we're all set. Next up, also underneath the mobile network settings is our access point names. Tap that and here's where you'll need to possibly add an addition. To do that, just click on the plus sign and you can add that in there. Here's what it needs to be. Very simple. All of this other stuff you don't have to worry about. All you've got to do is make sure your APN is set to fast.t-mobile.com. Once that's done, you should be good to go. You'll want to go ahead and reboot at this point just to make sure everything's all set. And then you should see if you're in a, uh, a 4G area, like I am, your H should change over to 4G. That can take a little bit of time the first time around. Next thing we need to do, test our speeds. So before running your speedtest.net, which is a great app, I love it, make sure you turn off your Wi-Fi. If you're not, you're going to be testing your Wi-Fi speed, not your LTE speed. So you can see here, I've got full bars. I'm going to go ahead and begin test. You'll notice a few minutes passed. That's because I was getting some updates to apps and I didn't want that to happen. As you can see, 12 megabit per second coming down. That's not too bad. Now in this same location during off peak times, like you know the middle of the night, I'll easily get 30 megabit per second down and nine to 10 megabit up. So really, really impressive. Let's run that again, just in case you don't believe this. Again, no Wi-Fi there. This is just 4G. 14, 15 megabit per second down, switch over to up, and 8 to 9 megabit up. And this is, you know, 8 a.m., so it's starting the work day when everybody's starting to use this. So, wow, uh, I'm impressed. One other thing I do want to say, battery life on LTE, I always thought was going to be hideous. It's actually better than HSPA in my experience. So if you're not getting these kinds of speeds, try it again at an off-peak time of day. And if you're still not getting them, try flashing the other ROM. Again, this one is, uh, not the other ROM, the other radio. This one is 0.33 slash 84. Try the 0.27 slash 84, see if it performs better for you. If it does, go ahead and switch to it. Use that one. There's really no reason to use one over the other, whichever performance works best. Now, like I said, the reason we haven't showed you this before is there was an audio problem. So when you were getting phone calls, you wouldn't be able to hear the other person or more likely they wouldn't be able to hear you. This all-in-one fixed that, but Android 4.3 broke that again until these hybrid ROMs. So now you can use it on both Android 4.2 and Android 4.3 without any problem at all. So that's how to get LTE on your Nexus 4. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up to share that helpfulness with other people. If you like seeing these tips, please subscribe. Also, why not share it with your friends on your favorite social media networks? On Twitter, we're at PocketNow, and I'm at Joe Levi. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.